Now, before I started recording this game reaction, I gotta say, this one felt really weird to actually make my little bit of notes for, go through it all, and really start to figure out how I was going to structure this video, because for the first time all season, I really don't have a single complaint with almost any Jets players out of this game. Almost none. And when I say almost none, I mean basically none. Like, there was maybe a little bit of times I thought that there could be things done differently, but from a pessimistic music fan as myself, who thinks there are problems with this team, and has vocal, been so vocal with his opinions on this team, I gotta say, I thought this was one of the best games the Jets have played all season, and the fact that it came against the Leafs is really, really promising moving forward after this with this after this three-game series with them. This was an amazing win by the Winnipeg Jets. They obviously came out and they beat the Toronto Maple Leafs by a score of 5-2, and it was a very, very good game, and especially for almost the entire game, because starting off this game, I thought the Jets were gonna, not going to have a good one. I'm going to be honest. Like The way this first game started with that hand pass goal, I really thought it was going to be a bad one, and not because I knew it was going to be a goal that would be counted. I knew immediately when I saw the first replay that it was going to be an obvious hand pass, and it was going to call it back, but just because it was such a random start to this game, and I just had these feelings that when the Jets have really bad random starts to the game, or a random event happens to the Jets, it doesn't usually go well for them moving forward. But after that, I gotta admit, I really liked the way that both teams played in that first period and throughout this whole game. They really were able, for the most part, and the Leafs even for most of this game as well, at the first and in the second. After that, it was not so much, but they were really good at holding the other teams to the boards and really pushing the prior, putting the pressure on the open ice and forcing the game into the boards. That's the only time there's really any type of puck movement, and the few offensive opportunities that came up were mostly because of the fact that there was a play that was devolved off of the fact that there was all those play being drawn into the corners. They really did a good job both the forwards and the defense at limiting the play I thought in the first and second a much improved uh, play stance compared to what else I've seen in this series and just from this team recently with the way that the forwards were playing because I thought other than that I thought that it was a pretty good you know first period defensively for the um, for the Jets and for the Leafs in that area forcing the play to the outsides it looked really good they were really really able to control the middle of the end of the ice both teams were and keep it defensive so I thought that was a pretty entertaining slow grinding first period and from a little bit of that second as well but after that, I really did like the most of the play. And also, another thing that I thought was interesting is that they were talking about TV, how fighting is up for the first time in four years compared to where it's been. And I think that that's kind of something good for the game. Obviously, it's not good when guys get injured, like recently Ben Chirot breaking his hand. But obviously, that that's just something that happens. I think that it is something that I am happy to see returning back to hockey in a way. I think fighting is a good part of the game and has been a part of the game for a long time. And a lot of people say it's, you know, barbaric and all this stuff like that. I think there's a lot of different elements. As someone who's played hockey and when things get physical it really does jump the bench and I see why players do it I understand why players do it and it's really entertaining to watch as a fan so I really do think that that's a little fun little stat that's uh, happening within the league this year and I'm curious to see whether or not that stays the same when fan attendance comes back after we're done with all this COVID stuff that we're slowly getting to an end to anyway but the only other complaint that I really have with this game and not even a complaint and like I said I almost have no complaints with this team but the only one little complaint I had was Mark Scheifele just has to play defense it's getting embarrassing at points there were times where he was just skating next to the, uh, the puck carrier the leaf puck carrier going through the neutral zone and he could easily reach in and stick lift and easily make a play on the puck but he refused to and it was just really frustrating to watch because like i just don't understand why he's not getting his stick and jabbing it in there trying to make a play it's not a risk of tripping when it was as open and open not as defended as it was at times and i just want to see mark shifley being more active with his stick in the neutral zone and playing more of a defense and being more on puck i just feel like sometimes he's not and this was a game where it really showed at times in my opinion where he was he has still had a great game nonetheless i just didn't like really how he did didn't play defensively. I just wanted to point that out because I've talked about the defense and the cohesiveness of the forwards and the defenders and how it's just this, you know, lack of communication, I feel like, and he just feels like a guy who still isn't getting the memo that he needs to play defense. But other than that, almost every other forward I thought played a really good defensive game. And obviously, I want to talk about someone who I've been talking about a lot, and actually has a video. I have a video coming up on this player as, as well, just showing how good of a player he is and highlighting him again is Mason Appleton. He is having an like, amazing year and a start to this season, and in my opinion, is just showing exactly why the Jets need to pick him and let Cop go with this whole expansion stuff and not worry about paying Cop the money. Because I really, really do say this as a strong, avid believer in Mason Appleton that I see a top six potential in this player. The way he drives the net, the way he offensively carries the puck 
block, the way he can play defense, I feel like he's something the top six could desperately use. A fast, speedy spit winger who has the ability to have a lot of good offense in his game and, and to generate his own offensive chances while being able to play really good defensive hockey. That's something I feel like the top six could desperately use, and I just want to see him play with Mason Appleton. I mean, excuse me, I want to see Mason Appleton play with Kyle Connor. I think, you know, them being on the same line could be really beneficial. I think balancing about the wingers, you know, scheduling it all out, I think that it could help with the lack of defense that Connor plays, and I think it just could be something that we could see going on eventually if Stastny doesn't resign after this season, but I definitely think he has top six potential. I think that the Jets would be focusing on keeping uh, Mason Appleton instead of Andrew Kopp. No matter what the circumstance is, they need to keep uh, Mason Appleton. He cannot be exposed, and I'm going to be making a video talking about that recently soon, so if you haven't already, subscribe, turn on notifications where you can see that video when it goes up about me sharing my opinions on what the future holds with the Winnipeg Jets and Mason Appleton. But moving on from that, I want to talk about how, in my opinion, another negative I had, which was not a negative in any really individual performance, it's just a negative play in the game where I thought was the worst part of the game for the Jets, was that first power play that they had where they leave scored their first shorthanded goal. Um, that was a horrendous first power, uh, performance by the first unit there. They were just doing nothing right, they were not able to get the puck through, they were bringing the puck in, like they were had, they, they almost, they had as much pressure bringing the puck in as a 5 on 5, and it was just not a situation where it looked like a power play, there was no puck movement through the neutral zone, no breakout passing, it was just a really stale unit, and it showed when they got scored on there, they just did not deserve to get a goal, they didn't deserve to, you know, in my opinion, I I honestly said, you know, the Leafs are going to deserve a goal when they broke out of that zone, because they really did, because the Jets were just playing horrible and horribly, and I just did not like that performance. Other than that, though, that was basically the only neg negative point, I feel like, for the entire game, for a team as the whole, as the, for the Jets. I really don't think after that there was any real one incident where you could look and be like, oh, you know, that was a horrible play, because even on the next shorthanded goal, um, it was a really good, next goal, I should say, it was a really good play there at a fake out pass by uh, Nylander when he shoots that, so there's nothing really much you can say there about Bruce Wall. he just got fooled, and that happens to players at any level in any sport, so I think that was the only real negative moment this club had in that game, and then moving on from that, I think that uh, uh, Neil Pionk is you know, he obviously made that pinch there, and that's why that goal could have, you know, went, been prevented a little bit, but at the same time, it's, you know, you give him, get with a guy like Pionk, he's going to play that pinching role, so it's stuff that's going to happen, and you just, you know, sometimes can't make up for it, so I don't really have any problem with that, because pinching is just part of Pionk's game, and unfortunately, sometimes at any point, no matter how good you are at pinching offensively as a defenseman, you can get burnt sometimes, it happens to the best, and it happened to Pionk tonight, so nothing really there other than other than that, really. And honestly, other than that, I want to talk about my boy Logan Stanley coming back into the game because Nathan Bully's out, his second game being back, and he registers his first career NHL assist on the Paul Stastny goal to tie it 2-2. So congratulations to him. I knew he was going to get it sooner or later. He's been very, very reliable in my opinion at times. Even though there are still holes in his game where he's developing it slowly, I do think he's much better than Nathan Bully, and I think even how getting this point, and I hope that this keeps him in the lineup, I really do. You know, I don't know how exactly long Bully is going to be out for. I would expect for at least a month with the way that they made it sound. So hopefully Stanley can really prove that he deserves this spot over Bullu in the coming month and put going to get on get some good points gathered to his name. So I just want to see him stick in the lineup. So really happy to see Stanley having a good success. And it just honestly, it's just more promise for this club's defensive core moving forward. If Logan Stanley can be that wild card prospect and develop into a top four guy for the Jets potentially, that could be huge for them having Billy Hainola, Dylan Stamberg, and even Declan Chisholm coming up through the moose right now. So that's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the prospect core as time develops throughout this club. But other than that, I want to think that the Jets, like I said, played a really, really good game. DeMello and Morrissey getting reunited obviously was another good standout in my opinion because they haven't played a lot this season after being very successful last season and it looked like, it, honestly, it really fixed Morrissey's game to a lot of sense. In my opinion, there were times where Morrissey looked like this was his best game of the season. Um, I really like Morrissey's play this year after he's he's obviously been not that amazing for the last two years but I'm not on this trade Morrissey bandwagon. I think he's amazing. He's really important for this club and I think that his contract is still going to be good value eventually or at least be worth his value because I feel like he's just going through a problem right now playing with the roster personnel that he has he needs more of a reliable player Tucker Pullman ain't that reliable and God, Nathan Bull, you ain't reliable either, so I really think getting him with a more settled, composed defenseman, and I think DeMello just played well with Morrissey as well, kind of like what we saw when he played with Villahinola. Villahinola was very composed with the puck, and even for a rookie, he didn't play like one in that game, and he hasn't really played like one in a lot of times in the NHL, so I think when Morrissey plays with a more stable defender, a more, you know, balanced defender with, like, that two-way game, I feel like he plays better hockey. Look at how he was with Bufflin, look at how he was with Truba, look how he was with even anyone that the Jets have had in the past. When he's got a reliable two-way guy with 
with him that can play good defensive minutes and hang back through that neutral zone. He plays better hockey. He can make better zones. And when Morrissey has to carry a top four, he's not good. And he's been having to carry a top four for the last two years. So when we get more help in, I believe Morrissey's game is going to stabilize. And I really do think that this was a sh showing tonight that his game can stabilize in the coming game of the season. I just think he needs to find that right partner again and really balance his game out. And that also leads me into saying that I think that Paul Murray should experiment on playing Derek Forbert and Neil Pionk as a top defender, uh, top defensive pair, or play the second pairing and first pairing equally and stop putting all this pressure on Morrissey, not because he can't handle it, but because I think it would be good for Morrissey to have not have to play such a massive increased role for the, the Jets blue line. I think if you device, diversify that man on minutes and you let them play more of an equal type of balanced uh, combo there with those pairings, I think Morrissey and DeMello's game could improve very, very much so as compared to where it's been for this season. But other than that, I just I think the other big standout is Nikolai Ehlers and that second power play staying hot. They were really good in this game on that goal that Ehlers scored. I just like that second unit better than that first power play. I just I keep pre preaching that, and I hope Maurice promotes some of those guys to that first, pari uh, first power play just because based off of what they've been able to produce, but I know that won't happen, but it's just me as a fan dreaming. But other than that, I just love Nikolai Ehlers, man. You guys know how much I love this kid. He's such a good player, and I'm so glad he's on this club. He's just showing how he's one of the most underrated forwards in the league and one of the best wingers in the Canadian division. But other than that, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this game. What were your thoughts about the Jets and this, their performance against the Leafs in tonight's 5-2 win? I want to hear all about it in the comments section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're a fan of hockey, regardless of the team you root for, but if you're a fan of those Winnipeg Jets, definitely consider dropping a subscription and turning on notifications. I'm going to be having a bunch of videos coming out about these trade situations, the trade rumors involving Matthias Ekholm and other players that the Jets seem to be coming into interest in the nubbing weeks before the trade deadline. So if you're looking for trade deadline content for the Winnipeg Jets and for other teams in the Canadian Division, this is the place to be. Thank you so much for watching. Follow my Twitter link in the description if you haven't already. Peace, love, and positivity as always, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys in the next video. Go Jets, go!